Howdy, Beefalo Bard here, and welcome. Guess what? Sick again. Lovely, huh? Alright. So, just a test building here. Because the fact that the stream party is going to be about socializing and goofing off and doing miscellaneous crapola, gotta have a club, right? Just something seems a little bit weird about seeing the UE4 mannequin doing that dance. Alright, so, um, yeah, this is just a sidetrack here. Um, bar counter, everything is all temporary placeholders. You know, I'll be using all Cinti assets. But the key of it was testing the animation and actually uh, testing out Disco Ball and the lighting effects. If you can tell, but, um, Seems darker in this one. But getting reflections there, I was hoping that the chrome would actually uh, reflect out and actually see things out here on the map. But we got uh, flashing lights, and I'll go over those um, because they're not just a light, you know, just thrown in. They're editable lights in the scene. Same with the uh, revolving lights. And. Yeah. I know it's very, very dark. You can't see what's going on here. But going behind the bar. And bartenders can work here. And just a little overview there. So, let's actually get out here to look at the lighting. Just a quick look on how I made those. Uh, blueprints. Light. Okay, so the blinking bulb, what I've done is on event begin play, uh, set up a blinking system. All it basically does is sets visibility off. It's got a delay on. Yeah, got that in there too. And then setting the intensity and color. So you can actually change the, um, the blink rate. And you can change the uh, the colors and how bright the light is. And when you actually look at it in the scene, the blinking bulb, you can see here, intensity, blink rate, and the actual color, RGB color. So blue is 255. The max is 255 for all the way on, and of course zero for all the way off. It uses a different scale between that and uh, yeah, the normal color picking the disco ball really didn't do much with that one just kind of threw it in the scene just to test it out the rectangular lights are these guys and all they are is just the the actual light portion the lighting fixtures there are some fixtures in some of the Cinti assets that these work really really good on because they're more of a projected and you have a lot of stuff you can do with them like the light color, you can actually do a lot more than that with it, but it's all I've got functionality-wise is that and the intensity. The rotating, I set up a two-way, and you got two lights on it, and hence, you know, two-way. Um, and each light you can control separately for the color and the intensity. And the rotation. Now, the yaw is actually going to be, as you look at it, it's rotating around this way. So you can actually change the pitch and the yaw. You could actually add multiple rotations to it and, and it would just do a tumble effect. So being able to run those, uh, just a nice little thing. Spotlight is, well, just a spotlight. But I did add some functionality to it. Intensity, attenuation radius, the color. Don't need the alpha in it, but being able to adjust them in the scene, you can drop a light in as a blueprint and then edit the actual light itself. So, thought that was kind of cool. So, we'll go to our regular lobby map. So, uh, the animation is a mix of my animation that was converted over. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for and get another animation from Mixamo and show you how I make that work. I need one for 
um, the player looking at it, their their phone or texting. I thought I had a texting animation and I can't seem to find it. So I will go ahead and get one. So you go to Mixamo, log in. And I've already got the Ybot into my, um, my project and it's already set up to retarget. So let's actually look and see what we got for animations. Try text. Texting while standing. I think that'll probably do. So we'll click on it, take a look at it. So it goes from idle and it's texting on their phone and I'm assuming it will blend well if I put it in the animation blueprint without having to do anything fancy. Um, so this will actually work. So I'm going to click on download FBX without skin. I don't need the skin. 30 FPS is fine. Keyframe reduction, none. And I'm just going to go ahead and download So, right here, I've already, that's the stripper dance. Um, texting. Save. I should have, ooh, shit, I guess I should have waited to make sure that I actually finished it. Um, but the animation itself, uh, I've got a temp folder and animations. Now, what I've done is I've actually imported in the Ybot skeleton from Mixamo and create the animation folder and I'm just going to grab that animation and drag it in and skeleton going to use the Ybot skeleton and import alright so that's that now all I have to do is just retarget it to the UE4 mannequin skeleton and we're good. Now I've done videos in the past on retargeting and I, and actually converting the skeleton from basically Mixamo to UE4 uh, animation conversions. So what I'm going to do is right click, retarget, and I'm going to change the folder it's going to, character, animation, Actually, I want to make sure I've got a folder for miscellaneous stuff. Character, animations, new folder, misc. So I actually have a folder to put it into. Um, I try to force myself to be as neat as I can. I usually forget, but um, I never hurt to try to get organized. Alright, animations, miscellaneous. And retarget. And pulls up the phone. Looks a little different, but you know what? It'll it'll have to do. So what I'm wanting to do is whenever the player actually brings out their phone. Um let's see here. This is an, an older version from what I was working on before. This is all admin stuff. And don't even know if I even have the um the player phone system in here. Nope. Alright, so perfect excuse to go ahead and make it. So what you're gonna have is the the player's gonna have uh, their own personal phone and they're also going to have a um uh you know the animation to pull it out and hold it so while they're using their phone we want to keep them stuck in place and, and actually using it um, I don't actually have a phone itself because I don't have the the assets in here so geometry we'll just make one really quickly materials screw it let's make it blue so to grab this BSP geometry zero it out 
and I hate these third person example maps uh, let's go with height of 2 let's actually make it 3 why not it's an older phone and X Ten Y five. This is definitely not the final phone, so it doesn't really matter. We just need to hold this brick. <laughs> and all we're gonna do with that is create static mesh assets mesh folder SM underscore phone. Another thing to do is collision, add box of void collision. Uh, whether it needs collisions or not, I don't know. I can always come back and re remove it. So this is going to have to be replicated. So I'm just going to come over here, find a blank spot, and let's get started. Um, let's actually go ahead and start with the beginning part of the widget so we just want to go to user interface widget blueprints and phone underscore w now the, the phone and the admin tablet are going to be two different things um, so to get started with I'm just going to grab an image we're going to anchor it to the center and Uh, so let's just go ahead for now 500 by 500 we just want something as a placeholder negative 250 and negative 250 perfectly centered up compile and save um, we'll come back and actually do the functionality here in just a minute so what we'll do here is keyboard P lack of a better key. Um, we're just going to start with the P key and what we're going to do here is create a widget. That widget is going to be the phone widget and get a reference to your player controller. Um, let's actually use No, we can just use a close button. So we can actually just come in here with the um, phone widget, add in one little piece of functionality. Let's actually change that to black. And change the alpha to point 0.3. So we can see through it a little bit. Totally a placeholder, but let's get the functionality first, then come back and actually clean it up. And we're just going to go ahead and put a button in here. Text. Close. And just because that will get changed, every bit of this will get changed. So on clicked, when we hit close, what we want to do is cast to our player. Actually, no, we don't want to do that. We want to player controller. We want to set input to game only. Get a reference to our player controller. So what we're doing is we're setting the input mode back to normal and we want to set show mouse cursor to false. And we want to get rid of this widget so let's just do remove from parent. This will actually close it and set you back to the correct game mode so you can just keep on rocking. So that widget's done for now. Um, so 
we create the widget and now we need to go ahead and add the viewport then we need to set input mode to game only I may try doing game and UI later again but the last few times I tried it it just was crappy then set show mouse cursor to true so this is going to bring the widget up give us a mouse cursor and, and allow us to actually use our mouse cursor so now I hit P there it is see we still have control so we're gonna have to fix that oh, because I did game only instead of UI only set input mode to UI only player controller reference and widget reference now that we have our head out of our anus alright so we hit our P key I think it's normal close and we're back to normal again so lighting needs to be rebuilt because of what oh the phone's still in the scene excuse me alright so next thing let's go ahead and start um, getting the phone itself there and setting up the animation so we want to actually have something to to show for we don't want to just oh we're in a menu and you're standing idle we want it to look like we're actually doing something so we're going to end up replicating all this and setting up the actual um, player itself so third person animation blueprint we're still using that um, default we want to do this from there an idle run and from here I really really hate the way this blueprint looks so yes it bugs me to no end and I have to clean it up I don't know why but I guess it's just I think that um, if you're gonna be going through the trouble to set up all the functionality and cool stuff and whatnot for your blueprints and trying to create a nice game you should probably have a little bit of cleanliness and organization so that whenever you're actually going back in you can actually remember what you were doing and, and see how to to fix and upgrade things and show my age considerably here um, back in the early mid mid 80s early 80s we finally got a computer class in high school unheard of what the hell is a computer nobody knew what computers were and how to use them I did um, I got my first computer which was a TRS-80 color computer back in 1983 so it's been around computers quite a bit um, but when you couldn't afford your own games you just got creative and made your own text games um, we need a variable here use phone compile and save and what we need to do is set this to true and um, really quickly go back into our widget so yeah um, with that computer class uh, back then the computers you were limited on options you had the TRS-80 color computer you had the the Commodore wasn't really out at that point I, mean, I think if, during, whenever that class came out it was so you had the Commodore 64 the TRS-80 um, there was a few other little weird ones like Timex Sinclair that was coming out but you had the Apple IIe and the Apple II series of computers um, and unfortunately that's what our, our school bought was Apple IIe's but we're pr learning to program in basic language <laughs> you know really advanced stuff right um, we're going to actually have to get to our player reference 
So, like I said, whenever you, you didn't have and couldn't afford the games and your parents wouldn't buy them for you, you had to just make your own shit. And using basic language, there's only so much you can do. But, um... So by the time I actually made it into a computer class, I already knew how to program. I was just taking it because I thought it was cool, you know. And I might actually learn something, which was, <laughs> yeah. Our, our computer teacher was actually the typing teacher. Love her to death. She was a sweetheart when you're not in school, but she was like demon, you know. Satan was afraid of this woman whenever he took typing with her. To give an idea of the age, my mother, whenever she went to the same high school, had the exact same typing teacher that I did. Um, we need reference to our phone. Get use phone. Um, actually, let's go ahead and change that to a set mode. I'm going to set it to false here, and that will trigger and also run through the um, animation blueprint. So this is just a way of canceling the blueprint state, or the animation state. So now we can actually uh, use your... Fuck, I can't type. Not enough cold meds or too much. I don't know which. Yeah, I, the stuff that they were teaching in that class was so simplistic. But one of the things that um, the teacher kept preaching was putting in what they call REM statements. R E M. And what a REM statement was is um, just a little bit of text you could put in there, but you put an REM in front of the line, and it prevented the, the code, the computer wouldn't read that as part of the code, so it would just ignore it and keep on going, but it was a note. So um, if you were doing a particular task and somebody else, you know, could come in behind you, read what you were doing, and this was her idea. Well, what if somebody's coming in and and is working on your program after you know you created it and they want to figure out how you did something and I, I personally took offense to that and it was like why would I want somebody else coming into my program after um, you know I've created it why wouldn't they just call me back to fix the program or upgrade it I don't want somebody else touching my stuff and if I put rim statements in for them to know how to, to crack my code and figure out what I'm doing, you know, how am I going to make money off of it? So, no, I'm not putting REM statements in. And I made a, a stand, and I said, I'm not going to do it. So she would dock me points on every project that we would do, because I refused to do um, the REM statements. Sorry, condense that story down. So yeah, I just get a reference to our player, and we're setting this variable we just created in here. And we'll go in here and create some functionality. We're going to come out of here and say, add a new state. Use foam. So this first entry into this, we want to get that, grab the animation, plug it in, and we're all set there. Now we need a, a reason to be able to get into it is because we're using our phone and that will get us into the animation. So to go from idle run to using our phone we have to have that status of using our phone. We go into our animation um, state here of using the phone and now we need to be able to get back to the idle and run. Um, So let's actually just do it direct. We're not doing a transitionals. So we're just going to grab our use phone, drag off from here, type in not B, N O T B, and it'll come up with the not Boolean. So we are not using our phone. Compile and save. 
Damn it. Connect, you piece of shit. So, that's going to get us to and from our, our phone animation. And a little bit premature, but grabs the phone, does the animation. And when we hit close, it just jumps right back into our normal animation. We don't have a, a better transitional. Alright, so it looks terrible, but whatever. It's getting us there. So now we can actually start adding some other functionality in here. So when we hit P, this is what we're doing. But this isn't replicated. So let's actually break this. We're going to move you out of the way. We're going to use you, but not yet. Do a custom event. Client is phone and multicast reliable. And this is only part of this. So that gets us there. And then, you know, just a quick shortcut of custom event use e phone because we call that used phone we couldn't you do the same thing run on server reliable very similar system for um, using the admin but we're not utilizing which I won't get into that right now because you know it's special it's awesome but the switch you know only the server is allowed to use the admin um, console all right so we got that um, use phone then we grab this guy over here what I was thinking about doing was using the same key to open the phone but if you're on duty maybe have a, a different thing like shift P or shift one or whatever but yeah we're not gonna worry about that just yet so we're gonna use phone and let's see if we broke anything the P key draws out our phone now we need to still spawn our phone as well and then we close that and we go back to our normal state so let's actually try it with two players All right, client server is going to be off screen. We're going to start with the server. Okay, this is going to have to be fixed because you can see the the widget open for both. That's an easy fix. Close. Yeah. But that's not a problem. Yep, not a problem. We shouldn't have done the, um, the animation there. But that's okay. Um, that is multicast reliable. That is run server. You don't really need to have the widget in here. Um, that needs to be outside of the event. So all we need in here instead is this could probably actually stay on a different link. We just want that to happen for now. Set use phone and let's try that. Because it was replicating, it was causing everybody there to um, open the phone. So let's grab the server, park them in front, hit P, let's see the animation, and no problem. We don't have a way of ending it right now. 
Alright, so definitely need to come back in here, replicate this. So when we hit this, we want to client use phone, which is just that right there. Then this stuff needs to run separately. This does need not need to be part of the replicated portion so that it doesn't show up in your face. So now, client, we can see the server there. We hit P, and it only opens up for the, the person doing it. Hit close, we go back to normal. And the animation did not replicate, so we'll have to figure that out. Sorry, we'll come back over here. So. The server is doing the animation. Server has the um, the widget, and we're fine that way. So that portion is fixed. Um, It's going to bug me that it's not clean. Alright, so that's that. And let's troubleshoot one more time again. Let's see exactly what's going on here. And I think I know what the issue is. Where is it? There you go. So, when the client does it the server is not seeing it. So let's actually go back over to the server. Server is doing it just fine. Server is seeing it. So yeah, okay. Um, and that's the joy of trying to get this damn replication stuff to go. This variable is there. Let's actually go into the animation blueprint and Set this variable here. Use your phone. Replicated. Let to click there. So that should be that. All right. So client. Client is doing it, but the server can't see it. The server doesn't see that the client is actually in that, that pose. But, let's just check the uh, server again. Server is doing it, and we're working just fine. So, that's fine. Those are replicated. And we should be good with that. So I just have to figure out what's going on with that. I will come back. We're, we're, this isn't a multiplayer replication um, deal. This was to make things happen. So in this process here, we need to oh, um, make sure we got more room. on the client end of things. So move it up here, move this down there. We're doing this. We're saying that we're going to use our phone and that's going to trigger the animations. So that's good. But we also need to spawn in our phone. So let's go ahead and we don't have a socket for it. Go to our skeleton. Select our right hand. <sighs> Left. Wow, I, I really... Let's 
it's out of socket. And we're just going to call this our phone socket. Add a preview asset. of our phone. And of course we want to use our animation, so let's actually use specific animation and it will be texting. And I'm actually going to go ahead and pause it and then what is all that shit? Looks you get a little weird twinge. All right, this is a use and put away type animation. I don't like that. Well, nonetheless, let's just go ahead and... Our phone is way too freaking out of scale here. But not the point of this exercise. We just wanted to have something in our freaking hand. So it looks like we're actually holding a device. The actual phone and everything will be done separately. All right, so uh, that's good enough. Save, and we have our phone socket. So now we can actually go into um, spawn actor from class. But we don't have a phone. So we need an actor. Assets. Items. Let's actually go ahead and blueprint actor. Phone underscore BP. And here, add static mesh. Phone. Well, and save. That's good enough. So now we have a blueprint to actually spawn as an actor. We need a place for it to go. So let's get a reference to our mesh. Get socket transform. And it was called phone. that and let's go ahead and get a reference to the, the phone phone ref and then let's go ahead and attach to component All right, so socket name again, phone, and snap to target. That's going to put the phone in our hands. We're setting to use our phone here, and we're spawning it in. So we're going to have to destroy it at some point because we go in here draw our phone and you bastard you didn't stay on the friggin thing oh mesh reference here But it brought out the phone, so there's the phone, we see it in our hands, interfere with our camera a little bit. Then when we go to close, we need to destroy the phone. Go to our phone widget, go to our 
our graph inside this right here before we remove from parent let's go ahead and get phone ref because we made that new variable and then we want to destroy actor Logically speaking, this works fine. I'm sure UE4 will find a way for saying, you know what, we don't want this to work. You don't deserve good, proper functionality. There's our phone, it goes in our hand, we don't need it anymore, phone disappears, and it's gone. So, I'm fine with it like that for now. Later on, functionality would actually streamline this to actually whenever you're putting it away it doesn't go away until you're you're almost done with the animation but for now we get our phone we're holding it looking at our crotch and close so we'll have to go in there and change the um, a, a channel setting so that we won't see ourselves like that we hit close and the phone's gone so delightful then you can actually work on the um, so most people are actually not going to take time to look at their crotch before they're they're going to use their their phone. They're just going to do it. So get the phone, using your your thing, and close it and go back to normal. So that's that. So these are all placeholder stuff just to get the functionality there. Um, with that phone is where we need to actually create more functions inside here. So that's going to take care of getting rid of it but we actually need to actually do something with this I'm going to take this close button shove it out of the way because if we're going to do this why is it oh get your ass back on the fucking button out of the way so functionality wise I have to think what do you want the player to be able to do with that phone um I mean, honestly, let's take this and solid black. So we're hiding everything behind it. And I'm actually going to make it taller and wider. Let's go with 600. I'll make that negative 300. Well, you don't want your, your player having anything that could be conceived as being cheats. You want them to be able to see their their credit balance, uh, their amount of gold, uh, later on an inventory system, but you're not controlling your inventory with your cell phone. But having bank balances and stuff like that, is probably something that would be important. So, what do we have here? Well, our player name and our health. Player name still, I gotta sort out the functionality of that to get it more correct. Um, it, it works, but I'm getting your, your name based off of your Steam name. So, we'll have to at some point add the, uh, the currency system back in here. Um, this version does not have the health and thirst in it. It does have the admin panel and being able to go on duty and off duty. Um, there's nothing in the server stuff on this one. Player interactions, still the original warp to player, send to jail, release from jail. And client cannot access that at all. But the server go on duty. So you see when you're on duty, you're blue. Target the player. I know you can't see, but I've targeted the player, and now I can actually
sit in jail. Did not actually get it. But since you go in here, what the hell? All right, blow me. Why did this change? Let's block all dynamic. Why does Unreal Engine mock me? Fuck off. Show me what I'm looking at. Alright, so I'm not on duty, so it's not going to work. Go on duty, close window, go into this mode, and fire it off, and it's staying green all the way through. Oh, I know why. Because I was actually doing... the dart thing. Fuck off. <laughs> Alright, go on duty. Close window. There we go. And poof. Send to jail. So you can see, I have sent the player to jail. Player is in jail, can no longer escape. Now, the thing is, is, I got carried away with the other project with all the extra settings and all the other fancy stuff and assets and so forth that, um... There, release you from jail. Can't remember what I did and, and undid. So... It just sends them back to their original spawn point. Alright, and it's going to give an error. It always does, but it works just fine. Set actor location. Targeted player should be a targeted player reference. Um, and it is there. It's created from that, so it should work, but it does not give an error when you're actually playing it in the game, and when you're actually playing it in a compiled version or a packaged version, it works just fine. So, that's why I have not worried about changing it just yet. Alright, so the phone, I will tweak that. We're coming up on the hour mark, so I'm going to start wrapping things up here. The um the dart system gonna revise that because I'm having some other issues with it. No matter which way I set it up, the frickin' mesh on the dart's always going the wrong frickin' direction and it's pissing me off. So close you for now. Let's just put you back in here. Compost and save. Close you. So I want to talk about a couple things really quickly. And I'm just going to go ahead and change maps. And go into wrap up mode here. Maps. Come okay, on. I need one. Select a viewport. That's fine. All right. So, with the um, the project, I'm gonna do a separate video, and it actually will be a video instead of a stream that will lay out the definition of what stream party is going to be, um, and what it's actually going to be um, involved in it and so forth, and just all the nitty-gritty about the project. Um, also, funding and recruiting if anybody wants to join in and uh, assist with this in a little, in whatever way they can. Uh, making donations towards getting it funded, which is 
I'm not requiring any anything other than 100 bucks to get it hosted on Steam. That's it. All the assets are going to be Cinti Studios assets, and they're already obtained. Um, so all the assets are good to go. All the music is good to go. That's handle, going to be handled by Technoax. Uh, so that kind of stuff is good. Assets and, and music and sounds, that's all taken care of. Animations, for the most part, is taken care of. It's still going to refine and, and streamline a little bit. Um, going to try and get some work done on this tonight. And actually, you know, I won't leave this uh, this map into it, but I will have a test version ready for tomorrow morning, and want to get some people together to do some testing, run around, check things out. I'm gonna try to get the uh, admin console redone tonight if I can, and the player phone done tonight, and the save game t done tonight, if at all possible. Um, and then tomorrow sometime I want I make an announcement and say okay let's let's go and what I want is just as many people that are available to actually test a project with me go into a multiplayer and let's just give it a run try out the phone try, um, and that kind of stuff but I'm either going to do a standalone video or I'm going to do a standalone stream and let people ask questions about it but like I said I've been really under the weather today and have got nothing accomplished. I haven't even been able to sleep good in several days. So that's what's slowing me down right now. And for sure I wanna have a you know a good stream to physically just talk about what is stream party, what's it going to be, how's it going to evolve and that kind of stuff. So that'll be a separate video. I may do that tonight. Doesn't matter if anybody watches it while it's live. The whole point is to discuss what it is and that kind of stuff. Um, all right, so get with me on Discord if you have any questions about it in the meantime. But I am going to go ahead and try to set up another video specifically about it. And let's shoot for testing tomorrow, February the 8th, 2020. To do some actual testing on what's here. There's not a whole lot in here right now because I've basically restarted and what you're seeing is about a couple hours worth of work of redoing everything from the ground up. So, thanks for watching and we will see you guys later.